Hello there. In today's video, I wanted to go over the Magic Missile spell and everything you can do to increase the damage of it. This uses some really fun interactions that end up um, pretty much stacking damage, so you can get you know numbers, crazy numbers like a thousand damage just from a single spell, a single casting of it, or in a single turn. Sorry. This build is going to be very, very DM dependent, although it doesn't use any UA, like pretty much any uh, high damage magic missile caster, you other builds that you'll see. Um, I'm well aware of uh, things like the, is it the Twilight Druid, um, that can stack massive damage in a, in a similar way, and those end up with better numbers, but it, it's using Unearthed Arcana, which... I decided to avoid for this, because um, I think it's going to open this build up to a lot more tables. It is also going to matter how your DM chooses to interpret Magic Missile. Um, Red is written, this works perfectly fine, however there's um, a lot of DMs will just interpret this uh, in, a, in a different way, pretty much just interpret it so it doesn't work like this. So, red is written, you actually calculate the damage for your magic missile first, and then just apply it to every single dart. So it's a d4 plus 1, and then you just roll the d4 once, and then add that for all the, all the damage. Um, and you'll see Jeremy Crawford's treat tweets here, confirming that. And so the way this works is that if you add, if you are able to find features that add damage to any of the rolls... They will apply to every single instance of the magic missile. And uh, here's another of Jeremy Crawford's tweets, just to confirm that. So here you can see he's talking about um, uh, empowered, empowered evocation, um, and how that will apply to every single dart that increase in damage. Um, I won't be going into every single link when I talk about it down below, just to confirm that it works, but I'll leave this document in the description um, with, with all the links to all of the uh, different descriptions of the mechanics. So I'll just bring up an example that does work and an example that doesn't, just to sort of get a clearer idea of how this interaction actually works. So you see in the Goblin Features with Fury of the Small, We've got the line, when you damage a creature with an attack or spell, you can cause the attack or spell to deal extra damage to the creature. So you'll notice that this doesn't have any rider saying it can only be used once per turn. It does say you can only use it once per short or long rest. But there's nothing stopping it from applying multiple times in a turn, as long as it's just a single attack. Um, so, so this ability applies to the attack, not to the enemy, essentially. Whereas in comparison, uh, the in the Asima, um, a very similar ability is this here, where once on each of your turns you can deal extra radiant damage to the target when you deal damage to it with an attack or a spell. So the reason this doesn't work is because of this once on each of your turns, Rider. Because this effect will basically be applying multiple times in a turn, even though you don't have to activate it multiple times in a turn. So this is why Goblin works and Asima doesn't. The reason that Magic Missile is interpreted this way is, is it's said to uh, that the attacks hit simultaneously, which uses a different rule set. So essentially these kinds of things does, doesn't work with um, Scorching Ray. That works more like Eldritch Blast, where there's multiple different attacks, whereas Magic Missile is interpreted as a single attack. This is why something like Hex doesn't work properly. As you can see, it's, um, it says you deal an extra 1d6 necrotic damage to the target whenever you hit it with an attack, when you're, whereas you're only hitting it with one attack. So it'll add the d6 once, but it won't add it multiple times. So this can be countered... Um, Sort of easily, but sort of not. Magic Missile, of course, has a guaranteed chance to hit, so it doesn't matter about AC, and it doesn't matter about saves or anything like that. However, the level 1 spell shield, doesn't matter if you're using a 9th level spell, will still stop it. 
Counterspell can also stop it. Magic Missile can be counterspelled. And then Limited Magic Immunity, which is basically uh, six level spells and under, don't... It just don't work on the creature. Not a lot of creatures have limited magic immunity. From memory, I know Tiamat does. But others... I, I can't really think of any. <laughs> um, but I think if a couple of high-level demons or devils have it. Um, the, the description of it, I'm not actually sure. It might even bypass it if you use a high-level slot. But it's um, it says like six level spells and below have no effect. So, yeah, perhaps because if you're using a, a high level spell slot, it still works. I'm not sure on the rules, but I'm sort of just saying don't use this against limited magic immunity or talk to your DM about it, what what they think. Um, but with shield on, shield on counter spell, you can use your own counter spell to counter uh, to counter that. <laughs> so, if a wizard goes to cast shield to stop you, you can counter spell it. Although you need access to counter spell, obviously. So that will be one uh, point that we will try to get later on with the builds. So here is everything I could possibly find to increase your damage with, with this. There are a couple of things that might have worked, but they were so inconsequential that I didn't even bother talking about them. Um, one is like uh, Elemental Adept, the feat. It adds like a ridiculously small amount of damage. It's not even worth talking about. Um, so, as I talked, go Goblin Fury, the small ability, adds to it. Um, the 10th the level evoco Evocation Wizard ability lets you add intelligence to any attack roll, your intelligence modifier. So this will work, and then just on the side here, I've, I've gotten uh, essentially how many points of damage per missile it adds per level. Um, but it, it does, it, this doesn't necessarily mean, like, just because it's high doesn't mean it's, it's the right option to choose. So this will take a whole 10 levels of investment, and if you have a f uh, 20 intelligence, that'll be plus 5 damage. Hexblade's Curse works, although Hex doesn't. Hexblade's Curse still manages to work, and if you've got, if you're at level 20, you've got a 6 proficiency. Um, so that'll just you just need a single level of Hexblade for this, and it still scales within proficiency. So that's really nice. Artillerist Artificer, uh, the ability. The, the fifth level ability lets you add a d8 to any of your spells in damage. So on average that's a 4.5. So it's slightly lower than adding like your modifier, but it comes a level earlier than most others. So I still end up using this quite a lot. Some ones that don't apply directly, but can be useful. Um, with the fighter you can use action surge to you know, cast two spells in a turn. So you see later down there, in terms of like first turn, turn damage, the, the using action surge is a big boost. One problem, a lot of these types of abilities that add just flat damage are damage type dependent, and if they are damage type dependent, they'll never be force, um, which is what magic missile is. So you can actually change this using the scribe's wizard ability um, to change the damage type uh, to a type that you can take advantage of with other abilities. So the Scribes Wizard is really important when we're talking about Draconic Sorcerer and Wildfire Druid, and also later on I'll talk about the Tempest Cleric. So all three of those can be really affected by um, the Scribes Wizard, as well as the Elemental Edit feat, but again, doesn't doesn't really doesn't matter. <laughs> The Draconic Sorcerer lets you pick an energy type and add your Charisma modifier to spells that deal that energy type. It happens at 6th level, so that's an option. Uh, Wildfire Druid lets you add your Wisdom modifier to any fire damage spells. So with uh, you can stack both of these as long as you choose fire as your Draconic Origin, and you're also using the Scribes Wizard, and you also have a spell in your spell book that will change the energy type uh, to just a fire spell. So uh, Chromatic Orb for level 1 would, is a good, like, pretty much a good choice because it lets you have more options as well. Uh, the Metamagic Empowered spell is also good. It lets you re-roll a number of dice of your attack. And so the way you want to re-roll is pretty much if you get less than the average of the roll, you can improve 
the damage. <laughs> so, for instance, with a d4, if you roll a 1 or a 2, you want to re-roll because the average damage of a d4 is 2.5. And so, pretty much the amount of damage this adds is for every d4 you add 0.5, and for every d8 you add 1 on average. And I'm not sure if this can be applied multiple times in a turn. The way it's described sort of seems like it can, because it doesn't matter how many if you've used Meta Magic on the spell already, and it's a Rider in empowered, uh, empowered spell. So you might be able to get away with using it multiple times in a turn. This will use a lot of sorcery points, so maybe I wouldn't overly recommend it. But this pretty much means that you can guarantee get a 3 or a 4. Like, I'd stop at a 3. So, on average, that bumps your damage up even more. But I'd, I'd stick with uh, just doing this. So that's like, on average, 1.5. Um, increased damage if you use... Empowered spell. You, you wouldn't really invest in Sorcerer just to get this. It'll be more if you're going for the Draconic Sorcerer already. Alchemist Artificer, much like the Artillerist Artificer, also adds damage at 5th level. Although it has a Rider saying it needs to be cast using Alchemist Supplies. And as far as I could read, there wasn't a way to be casting that with um, Magic Missile. But... Uh, um, the rules around spellcasting focuses and uh, tools and things with artifices are really complicated and really shaky. So I might have missed something and you might actually be able to use the Alchemist Artificer and it will be slightly better if you can get 5 Intelligence than the Artillerist. Because um, this is an average of 4.5 whereas the Alchemist is an average of 5. So maybe it's better but I've I haven't used this. Um, Tempest Cleric, your channel divinity, you can max out the lightning damage of any spell you cast. Most of the damage we'll be dealing is just flat damage, so this isn't as crazy as you'd expect it to be. Basically it lets you, if you're rolling 4s and 8s, you get to just take 4 and 8 instead of rolling them, rolling the d8s. Um, so that app, app it adds a total of 5 if you have a d8 and a d4 um, on average, so it actually works really, really well. Um, cause if you've already got something like the Artillerist Artificer, it, uh, just getting 2 levels of this means um, you're already adding 5 damage, which is what a lot of these other ones do as well. Um, although, you need to be dealing lightning damage, which means you need Scribes Wizard in there to deal lightning damage, and it also means it doesn't stack with the Wildfire Druid, so you can't have both of these working at the same time, because it's fire or lightning. Um, there's a spell, I, as far as I could tell, the only um, spell that worked properly to increase damage here was Bestow Curse. And this is really good if you can get it off. It adds a an, D8, which, as I've already discussed, is really nice. Um... It is a third level spell from Wizard. I think other classes also get it. Yeah, Bard and Cleric also get it. But um, we won't be investing in those anyway. Uh, the, the main one that you'd be applying is while the target is cursed, your attacks and spells deal an extra d8 necrotic damage to the target. So this also can't be mixed with a lightning one, um, which would be nice. But either way, it takes an action and it requires a con save. So, for one, it needs setup, because with the other builds, you can just first turn, come out, and just do your spell, and just kill something. And constitution saving throws are really unreliable, especially late game, and if you miss the con save, nothing happens with Bestow Curse. So that's a problem. Um, upcasting Bestow Curse can be quite good, because it removes the concentration but we're already not relying on concentration, so this is Bestow Curse is pretty much like something to keep in mind and it's probably worth taking if you already are at Wizard, but you can't really expect it to be reliable. But when you can, it's really good because it, it adds tons. <laughs> now, Favored Foe from the Ranger has the potential to be really good. Adding in D4, it's 2.5 on average. It's really strong from just a single level investment. The problem is, the way it's described is that you need to actually roll an attack.
attack roll, not just cast a spell or anything like that. An attack roll has to be rolled before it works. So this will also need set up, and you can't use something like Bestow Curse as the thing to set up the <laughs> favoured foe. So it's it's, it's going to be really, really clunky to use, so I don't end up using it. But it's a it's a way to optimise the damage. Um, also using Simulacrum, this pretty much doubles your damage. <laughs> it's a 7th level wizard spell, so you need to be 13 to get it. But it's it's very uh, it's very strong. But it it also needs setup, but not in a combat. It's like out of combat setup, and it's not the easiest thing to use. But by the time you're thirteenth level, you you pretty much have the gold to be able to continually cast it as long as you have the time. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And like it doesn't recover spell slots or anything. So there are issues with Simulacrum, but generally speaking, it's actually just a double damage rider because your other your, your clone can just be cast in your spells as long as they're not using 7th level spells. Because you only have one of those. Um, also, the new Magical Inspiration from Bards um, works really well. It's basically, if you have Bardic Inspiration, instead of adding it to like an attack roll, for instance, you can add it to the damage or healing of a spell. And it's worded in a way that it works with Magic Missile. So, that's pretty much adding a d6. Although, this isn't something you can set up yourself, because you can't give yourself Bardic Inspiration. You need someone else to do it. But if you have a Bard in the party, like absolutely get them to do this, because that's a massive amount of damage for you, as opposed to other, th other people. And these damages I've got down here are multiplied, usually by about 10, I'd say on average, but at max it's 11. So, yeah, because a... 9th level magic missile does 11 shots of magic missile. Anyway, let's get on to some of the builds. So, the first build here is pretty much just chucking in as many of the just straight pluses that you can get as possible. So it's using the, the sorcerer and the druid and the artillerist as just the, the flat damage rolls. You also need scribes in there to use the sorcerer and druid and just takes black face face curse. So that gets us to 20th level. Um, this is a super mad build, as in like multiple ability score dependent. This is why I called it the <laughs> Mega Mad Magic Missile Mage. Very funny joke. <laughs> um, um, yeah, but I so pretty much because you're gonna need intelligence for multi-classing into Artificer and Scribe Wizard, and also you need the source uh, so charisma to maxed out for the sorcerer ability and wisdom maxed out for the druid ability before even talking about your defenses. So, yeah, is this even possible? Well, it is if you're using point by and you get to mess around with the goblins' um, ASIs. So, how we calculate the damage is with a 9th level spell, you get to shoot 11 missiles, and each of the missiles, how you calculate the damage. So first of all, we've got an average of 3, that's with, uh, a D4 plus empowered, ev or, sorry, uh, empowered spell. From meta magic, uh, you, so you get the D4 plus one. That's the standard magic missile. You get 5.5, which is the um, artific artificer the D8 with empowered evocation. That gets it to 5.5 on average. Um, plus six from Hexblade's curse. And that's your proficiency bonus. Plus five from the artillerist and plus five from oh sorry, plus five from the sorcerer and plus five from the druid, and then plus 20 from the the fury of the small ability. So that's going to be 45 damage, and it's going to stack 11 times. So just with a single ninth level spell, you're dealing, dealing 505 damage, 0.5, to a single target. Um, and then on later rounds, because you can't use your Fury of the Small ability, and also you get less darts, you're going to be dealing 255, and then 200. 29.5 and then 204. So that's with an 8th level spell slot, a 7th level spell slot, and a 6th level spell slot. Um, yeah, so the 4 round damage, which is something I like to always do, is 297.25. Um, so the, the thing about this one is it's very... it's quite efficient for the spell slots that you're using, but it's not the bursty damage that we're going to get later on. But over over a few rounds, 
this is going to deal really, really, really good damage. Um, on top of that, it doesn't have any bonus action clog. This is slightly misleading because pretty much nothing's going to be able to survive this 500 damage. So first round, you're going to be able to kill the big boss. Pretty much, that's that's the gist of this, is you're going to come out and you're going to deal an insane amount of damage to one enemy and it's just going to go down. It doesn't matter how strong it is. Very few monsters have over 500 health. Um, things like Tiamat and Atresk have in the 600 range, so you can deal most of the damage but not fully kill them. Although it doesn't work against the Tress because of Reflective Carapace. But yeah, there's there's pretty much you know a bunch of monsters in that range. If I look up the Demogorgon, for instance, it's only got 406 hit points, but it's Challenge Region 26. So this kind of damage is just insane. Nothing's going to survive it. Um, so of course you can't switch your Hexblade Curse at this low level, so you're not really going to be dealing quite this amount of damage um, later on. But if something has you know, like a thousand hit points, some DM homebrew monster. Um, it's um, you know, you know, you can stack this on it and just keep dealing damage forever. Next, we have the essentially first round nuke. This is using fighter levels to get action surge, so you can cast two instances of um, magic missile in a turn. And uh, for those that think that you can't ta spell cast two level spells. It's actually just uh, a bonus action spell and a leveled spell that you can't cast in turn. Pretty much as soon as you cast a bonus action spell, you can't cast any uh, other leveled spells until your turn is over. Um, but using Action Surge, um, you can cast two action leveled spells in a turn. So um, this also uses two levels of Tempest Cleric so to maximize the damage. Um, you know, you need the Scribes. Uh, I went with Sorcerer 8 just to get an extra ASI. You had pretty much two spear levels. You, This is sort of the case that you might include Ranger if it wasn't so janky to get it off. But, you know, if you had a, wanted a couple rounds set up, like, you don't have to hit it, so you just, as an action, like, throw a dagger or something um, and to get it off. But I think it's just best going with Sorcerer. Oh, and that would delay you further with caster levels. So because you've got Fighter 2 and Artillerist 5... So with the five levels artillerist is essentially three levels of caster. So you can only actually use an eighth level spell slot. You don't have access to a ninth level spell slot. So we start with only dealing uh, using dealing ten uh, shots, and then but you can also use an eight, uh, seventh level on that turn, which is nine. So your first hit you can use your goblin ability with, which is going to be dealing uh, you know forty four damage. Just with, uh, so the D4 is maxed, plus one from the normal magic missile, plus six from Hexblade's Curse, plus eight from the D8 from the Artillerist, that, which is now maxed, because of the Tempest ability, and plus five from the Sorcerer, and plus 20 from the Goblin ability, which we don't get in the second shot. So on the first round, you're dealing 656 damage. This is higher than the health of anything in the monster manual, so yeah, you can just one-shot everything. <laughs> but there are homebrew monsters and things like that that might have more. And then on the following rounds, you won't be dealing as much as the first one would, but still a really, really strong amount. And then average over four rounds is just slightly less than the first one, so this is a very front-loaded build that you'd have. Finally... We're using Simulacrum. So some of the advantages with using Simulacrum is you can actually do this um, this damage against two separate targets without any penalty. So for instance, like Hexblade's Curse wouldn't work later on. Um, although you need to prep it, and so obviously it's not reliable for every day as long as you know you need time and money for to make a clone. And uh, as if it uses up all its resources, you know that's it until you get a new one. But yeah, uh, this build is going hob. Goblin, um, first level Hexblade, fifth level Artificer, Artillerist, and thirteenth uh, level Evocation Wizard. So you're not not using Scribes here, and just a first level Bard. And the thing about the Bard is, because you're using Simulacrum, you can actually use Bardic Inspiration on yourself, kind of. Like the real you would use your Bardic Inspiration against your clone, and your clone would use its Bardic Inspiration because it copies class abilities, not just spell slots. It can use that. 
to give you bardic inspiration. So you actually get to use your magical inspiration, which is a um, big, big help. So this this is going to be dealing way more than the earlier rounds, but um, of course there are problems with it. One of the, one of the main ones that I haven't really talked about yet, but will at the end, is that the progression of this is just awful compared to the other two. This pretty much only starts working at like 17, 18, 19. You know, uh, before then you're just dealing so much less damage than the other two. You know, because it takes so long to get the Evocation Wizard ability, and then you also need to get 13 before you get the Simulacrum, and that's kind of what this is relying on. But advantages of this is you also have access to Counterspell, and you have access to Bestow Curse. So, the Counterspell is just really, really nice. It means there's much less things that can just block you out. Um, you know, like this sort of thing could take down like dragons, but not take down, um, you know, like a, a first level apprentice wizard, <laughs> pretty much. Like, you know, could just stop it with a single shield spell. Whereas with counter spell, you can just shut the shield up spell down. So the way this works is that both you and your simulacrum pretty much get your turn, and you both have a ninth level spot spell slot, so of course you're both going to use it. You both get access to your goblin ability, it's not like one than the other. So, yeah, on your first turn you're actually able to send off 22 missiles. Each one deals slightly less damage because we don't have the advantages. I think it's 5 because we... Yeah, 5 damage, so that's... You know, other spell slots would use 44, and then this top one uses gets 45.5, so just slightly more. So, less damage per dart, but way more darts, 22. At the max power as well. So that ends up being 858, so just a ton. You know, if you split that between two targets, you'll most likely be able to take out two, two, you know, big medieval guys just in a single turn. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this really is a ridiculous build. Um, and the following rounds don't, don't, you know, absolutely shaft you either. You get 450 going down to 360. Yeah, this is also further increasing damage because of the magic inspiration. I didn't use it, uh, alright. So I, I forgot to say, I didn't use Magical Inspiration on the first turn with this, because you need your bonus action to set up the Hexblade's Curse. Um, so on the further rounds, you can deal a little bit more damage per slot because of the Magical Inspiration. And that's the formula for the increased damage. It's basically 3.5 per dart you get on average because of Magical Inspiration. So that's 500 damage on per, per round on average for four rounds. So like the semi-sustainable damage is just insane. If you were to wait until turn two, so this is what you'd probably actually do. This is the smart thing to do on your first round as an action. You know, you'd set up your Hexblade's Curse and then also set up a, uh, a concentration spell of some kind. You know, you have access to seventh level spells, so you might as well go for that. If you use that for your Simulacrum, you have sixth level spells and fifth level spells. There's, y yeah, you, you, you'll find plenty of effective things to do that you can do round by round over turn. I wouldn't use something like... Animate Objects, which uses your bonus action, because you're wanting to use your bonus action. And Telekinesis, which uses your action each round. Although, some uses of Telekinesis don't need to use your action round by round. But basically, a high-level overtime spell you'd start off with. So, this is the smart way to do it. And it also means you're dealing way more damage <laughs> on the first round. So, oh, on the second round, sorry. When you use Magic Missile. So, once you get there, you get to add your 3.5 per, uh, per round damage from Magical Inspiration, and that gets you up to 935 damage in a single round. And so the, the four round damage isn't that much more because it's the same same damage in the following rounds. That doesn't change um, with 537.5. But yeah, one option for your first round action is Bestow Curse. Again, this is a constitution saving throw, save or suck spell, so... It's not the most reliable thing in the world. You're, you're probably better doing something else. But it's an option. And if you really, really care about doing an insane amount of damage, this is this is the route you should go. I don't actually know why I calculated it as if you did it first round, because, of course, you can wait a round if you're setting up with uh, Bestow Curse. Uh, so, yeah, assuming you wait till turn two, um, pretty much... You get your 22 off uh, Bestow Curse adds 4.5 on average per round because it's a D8. 
So that's going to be 99 if you're doing 22 bolts. So you're adding 99 damage to the damage before. You'd only really use this on turn 2, but I added it to turn 1. Um, and this happens for all following rounds as well, it doesn't fall off. So on turn 2 you'd be dealing 1034 damage just in a single round. On average as well, this isn't like max damage. <laughs> and on the average is 623 damage. So you, you, you are adding about 100 damage each round over four rounds by getting Bestow Curse off. So it's a crazy amount of damage, but it's like kind of unnecessary damage, so I still I wouldn't, really wouldn't actually recommend you doing it. But, you know, I'm doing this to <laughs> go nuts with it, so here we are. And uh, just, just for one, I made it as if you um, just happen to roll the highest number for each of the... Um, each of the dice you're using, which is just 1d4, 1d8, oh, 2d8, and 2d8. So it's actually quite possible to roll really high or really low on this. Um, so, and, you know, roll 100% of it. So your maximum possible damage is 1,276, which also means your minimum possible damage is 792. So that's a it's, a it's a bit of a dip, but it's still you know that's the worst possible roll is 792, which is so about about 400 damage if you're going to split it split targets, which is enough to still kill most things <laughs> completely. <laughs> you just for comparison's sake, if you were a warlock going with Eldritch Blast and using Hex, my baseline as I've talked about in other videos and a lot of a thing other people have used as baselines, you'd be dealing on average 38.2 you know, damage. So, as, like, your best case scenario, which is, I'm calculating using this one, is 27 times as strong as the baseline damage. And if we're just taking the four round average, because this is a bit of a, like, um, Nova in the first round, it's still 16.3 times the baseline. So, yeah. An absolutely, absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. Um, so, <laughs> because it's this is kind of a crazy build, I don't know if I'd really recommend playing it in a, you know, like as a character that you play in a campaign. It's definitely a bit of a one-trick pony, although you have plenty of levels to grab interesting things. Um, it, it the main gimmick is you know a gimmick, and you should definitely talk to your DM about this beforehand. Don't just spring it on him, because like, that's kind of, that's pretty shitty, honestly. Yeah, so tell your DM you're gonna be playing this, and check it's okay. And if it's not, then, you know, don't don't play it. <laughs> um, yeah, you gotta make sure that he's rolling Magic Missile this way anyway, if it's a D4 plus 1, you know, as rules are written, because rules is interpreted, do whatever you want. <laughs> For feats, the only feat I could find that actually increased damage in the way we're looking for is Elemental Adept, which lets you re-roll ones, and you need Scribe's Wizard for it. And it, it really adds, like, a minuscule amount of damage on average. You know, uh, for HD8, it'll be 0.125, and under D4, it's 0.25 damage. So, like, it, my best case scenario is up there. It's it's 7.25 damage if you're casting with a ninth level spell slot. Like, that's that's not damage per shot, that's damage total. So, I it, just don't care enough to take it, or, uh, you know, even consider it. I'm pretty sure for every, everywhere we're talking about, like, your ASI needs to go on your stats, because you have abilities that rely on your stats. Um, and you're better off just putting that in defense anyway, if, if, if not... Yeah, um, so is this a viable, actual viable playstyle? Yeah, kinda. Um, <laughs> yeah. Certain builds, like uh, like the Simulacrum one, just don't work very well unless you're really, really high level. So I wouldn't recommend looking at this one. Um, if In terms of progression, I'd probably... You need, you need to take a level... Uh, with something else like either Sorcerer or Wizard to get the spell Magic Missile. I think the best to start off with, and if, you, if you're going really low level, take a feat to get it, like um, Aberrant Dragonmark is probably the best one that comes to mind if you're going to do this. I f don't know if Magic Initiate lets you use your own spell slots uh, to cast spells. 
I quite like starting off with artillerist if you're going to be if you're going to be quite low level. So go artillerist, take the um, and a uh, level of hex blade is also really good. So if you say like level six, I would go hex one artillerist five with the feat that gives you your um, magic missile spell. You know, for for instance, I'll just I'll just do the calculations down below for like how much damage this will be. But it really really does scale quite dramatically later on. It's not as good earlier on, but it's still pretty strong. So actually, I wouldn't. I'll cut out this the thing before. So if you're starting out, personally, I would go. Uh, I I don't think if you're going below level eight or nine. Just don't do this at all. I think, I think there's little things you can do like hex and like hex one wizard one. You can still get quite a bit of damage out. But I think, really, if you want to deal any like meaningful amount of damage, I would start off with level nine, with uh, hex blade one, sorcerer six, scribe two. Scribe two, sorcerer six would be okay. But either way, I'll just do the damage down here. Um, and I'll cut back in when I. Finish. So just to showcase what I mean, I went ahead and calculated the the damages at various levels. So it's it's not nothing like ridiculous uh, early on. I suppose it's kind of viable, but I wouldn't be overly desperate to play this uh, lower on. So uh, for instance, we've got uh, at level six. I think the best way to go about it is just hexblade one until the rest five. Um, so because we're doing a half caster, we aren't getting high level spell slots, but it's not really there's not really an easy way to with low amount of levels to uh, get, get the big bonuses from other places. So yeah, anyway, we've got yeah, you know, um, you know, you know, in your first round, you you get to do four missiles, each dealing 17 damage. So that's still 68 damage, which actually sixth level is very high, and the following rounds aren't too bad. You know, you got 44, 33, and 33. Um, because you have multiple low level spell slots, which is quite nice, but yeah. Uh, so your four round average is 44.5, which is uh, 2.5 times the baseline at this level, which is 17.8. But uh, just for reference, this number, 44.5, and your like, semi sustained uh, damage is already higher than the 20th level baseline, which is, again, Warlock using Hex and just going for. Um, Eldritch Blast, so yeah. <laughs> um, although obviously there's scaling issues when we talk about the baseline this high, like because more classes get access to more things, whereas this isn't really picking anything else up. They're just using scaling abilities. But regardless, um, you'll see not a lot of builds actually even get like double the baseline. Like double the baseline is great damage. So something really focusing on damage can reach past that, but very rarely you get like three times damage. Um, for instance, and this is easily reaching that mark. So anyway, uh, when we're talking, yeah, your no your nova damage is 3.8 times. Yeah, so still a lot of damage for for its level, but nothing crazy, nothing ridiculous. You know, these are these are relatively low numbers compared to what we get later on. You know, being like 27 times and 16.3 times. So yeah, um, at ninth level. Is sort of where I would say this is nice to use. Like, um, you know, you won't be just chewing through your spell slots. You'll have some amount of control over what you're doing, and it just just works a little bit better. So yeah, that's that's six shots each dealing 22.5. Um, so that's 135 damage at level nine. Very very nice. Nice amount of damage there. And then the following rounds, we get these this amount because we're dealing. You know, fourth level spell slots, we get two with fifth, fourth levels, and then two third levels. I think you actually have three third levels at this point, so even more bang for your buck. Um, so yeah, you're semi sustained, 87. That's 6.6 .6 times in Nova damage than the baseline at this point, which is 20 ish, <laughs> um, and 4.3 times in the semi sustained. So starting to look a lot nicer. But I think 14th level and above is where this starts to really, really pick off. So, you know, I, this is, I'd, I'd take 13 levels of wizard to grab the, the simulacrum. So this is using the simulacrum kind of thing before, which, as I said before, it's, it's kind of got some caveats and stuff. Um, definitely not super, super, super reliable, but really, really nice. And at this point, you've got, like, counterspell and everything as well. So this is quite solid. 
So with that, you know, you, we can deal as much as 495 damage. So again, that's enough to kill most things. Especially with that you'll be encountering at 14th level. Like, if if your DM is throwing this against like a normal party without you in it, um, at 14th level, and that's a monster with almost 500 health, like, that's kind of just a dick move. It's probably going to result in a TPK. Yeah, your four round, four round, four round average, 26, 265. And so this works out to be, in the Nova, 17.3 times the baseline. So this would take a Warlock 17 rounds to deal this amount of damage. And just round by round you're dealing 9.3 times. So yeah, just a comparison with how crazy this gets. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, so I'm back in post because uh, I realized a few things that I wanted to add. Um, for one thing, I forgot, completely forgot about the Grave Cleric and um, its Channel Divinity ability, which is that you can curse a creature and they gain vulnerability to all of the next attack's damage to it. It does take an action to set up, but uh, basically uh, this like vulnerability doubles your damage. So, um, yeah, I've got to build further down, but before I move on to that, there's a couple other things that I wanted to add. Um, first of all, I was reading up on it, and I actually, I found, uh, this Reddit post here, uh, which is just linked there, that talked about how the Asimer ability might actually be able to apply to, uh, Magic Missile, in which case the Asimer is a, is a much, much better option, uh, because you only get it once per long rest, so with a Goblin it's short rest, so you can actually use this in multiple different combats, um, and on top of that, it needs a bonus action setup, but where it's far, far superior is that it lasts the multiple rounds, so your following round damage goes up tons. I haven't actually changed any of the builds, because I'm still not 100% sold on it, that it actually works um, by raw, but um, talking about the the main build, the, the like waiting for turn two, two with the Simulacrum build, um, the average damage of that was 537, and it goes all the way up to 807. So, it makes a big, big difference on your round-by-round -round damage. But no difference to your first turn. So, you know, go figure. Also, the Celestial Warlock has a feature like the other ones that you add to your Charisma modifier to any fire or radiant damage um, spells. So, it's like the others, and we already had plenty of those, so it doesn't change any of the possibilities of the build, but I thought I might mention it just for other people. And this does also shut out uh, Hexblade, so, which is one of the best uh, contributors, so probably not the best idea for go to go for it, but it's possible. Um, on top of that, the over-channel ability, the 14th level ability for the Evocation Wizard, allows you to max the dice, so you can use that instead of doing the um, Tempest Cleric one, so it's, it's got a very similar effect. But also, uh, this only works once. You can use it in multiple rounds where you start taking damage, and I wouldn't really recommend it because it's not a gigantic, gigantic difference in damage. But it's there. Um, I didn't end up taking it because I think it's, it's kind of clunky and not really what I would want to do um, at any point. But instead of the Bard level on the Simulacrum web Warlock, uh, Simulacrum build, you could you could take an extra level of evocation wizard and get this, and it probably actually does deal more damage. But I'd prefer to go with the bard, personally. <laughs> also, I'm slightly more convinced that uh, the genie's wrath ability works, in which case it's just a superior version of hexblade. It does the same amount of damage, so it's not going to change any of the calculations down below. But unlike the Hexblade, it doesn't need a bonus action to set up. And you can also use it on multiple different targets. So like round by round, you know, if you kill someone, which you almost certainly will on the first round, you can switch to a different target and still not have the damage loss that Hexblade would have. I didn't ever use that in the calculations down below, but that was one thing that was kind of griping me is that you'd almost never be using multiple rounds against the same enemy. 
it was because of the insane amount of damage you're doing, uh, which isn't possible without the with, with Heatsblaze Curse. So, um, I also added some uh, like just other notes a bit. So you can use subtle spell uh, to avoid to avoid counter spells if you've got um, the sorcery levels. So I'd really recommend that. Um, but Symbiotcrums can also cast counter spell. So even if your magic missile gets counter spelled and you counter spell the counter spell, if there's another caster there, they might be able to counter spell your counter spell, and at which point your Simulacrum can counter spell that. Counter, 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 counter spell. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's many, many layers that you can do with this. Um, and so pretty much if you've got counter spell and a Simulacrum, you you can pretty much get this off as long as they don't have um, limited magic immunity and or afflicted carapace or something of a similar nature. I um, mean that very 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 few things do. I think of limited magic immunity. I think it was like Tiamat and then like a Rakshasa and that's the only two that I know of. But there might be others and it might even still work. I actually really don't know how the spell slot things interpreted there. And with reflected carapace, something I realized. I think I said a few times earlier that you cannot use this against a Tarras because of Reflective Carapace. But the thing is, a Carapace is only on the outside. So if you get swallowed by the Tarras, see no reason why you wouldn't be able to do this whole thing. <laughs> Let's move on to the Grave Nuke. So this is just absolutely, absolutely ridiculous damage on the first round. But because of the Grave levels, it does fall off much faster than the uh, Simulacrum build does. This also uses Simulacrum, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, you'll see with the numbers. So, it's pretty much the same as the one above. It's just instead of going Sorcerer to 6, we only went to 3 to get Empower... Um, sorry, to get Quicken Spell. I forgot to mention it earlier, but Quicken Spell is the way you're going to get this off. Um, oh, I missed a couple of these notes. Um... So, if you cast a magic missile out inside of the range of counter spell, which I'm pretty sure is 30 feet, a magic missile has 120 feet range, so you can just do that, and you can completely avoid counter spells entirely. Um, uh, also, you can use quicken spell to set up your action for grave cleric. So you use your action to do the grave cleric thing, and then you quicken spell your magic missile. That works totally fine. Um, just takes two sorcery points. Um, if you don't have access to Quicken Spell, you can hold your action for the Channel Divinity to stop the party from stealing it, but it does mean your entire round is devoted to setting up the next hit. So, you know, we are taking three levels of Sorcerer just for the Quicken Spell to set up, so it's probably smarter to do this. Um, and, you know, you can use those three levels to get other things that deal damage. Not sure what off the top of my head. Also, you only need Bestow Curse to go off once, so you can actually use both you and your Simulacrum's action if you were going to go down that route to get it, so it's actually a higher chance than I gave it credit for earlier of going off. Might actually be reasonable to do it. <laughs> you might, yeah. And then, so, you, like, you could go for your Bestow Curse, and if it lands, then your Simulacrum does, like, a good action control spell type thing. Anyway, so, on to the Grave Nuke. Um, I'm doing this with Genie just because... If Genie works instead of Hexblade, just use Genie, but it doesn't affect the actual damage calculations. Uh, so 2 levels of Grave, 13 levels of Evocation, same as before, 3 levels of Sorcerer, 1 level of Bard. And the damage here is how I calculated. Um, we've got Empowered Spell with uh, Magical Inspiration from the Bard, so that's what this number, 4.25, is. I didn't have it anywhere up, so I thought I'd put the note there. Uh, yeah, so that's... so. This means uh, the damage adds up to 39.25 per missile. You got 22 of those because of your simulacrum. But the diff main difference is because they're vulnerable, they're taking double damage. So you're actually doing 22 missiles of like 78 damage, 78.5, which works out to be 1,727 damage in a single round, which is just ridiculous. You're killing the strongest monster in the game, the Tarrasque, multiple times over with this. And you can actually target two targets with this, because your Simulacrum also has the vulnerability thing. Yeah, because your your attacks are considered separate attacks, you know, you can't, you can't stack it multiple times. Like, you do have to 
do it both <laughs> both things. But yeah, you get two targets. So you can split this damage between two car targets, which is still like 800 and something damage, um, which is, you know, Tarask is 287, some, sorry, 687 off the top of my head. I think I've got it somewhere around here. 676, my bad. Um, yeah, so easily going the, over the highest damage per game, multiple times over, like, <laughs> it's crazy, it's, um, yeah, so it's, that's 45 times the base damage, which means a baseline warlock, which would be dealing okay damage, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be playing this warlock at 20th level and be like, man, I'm just dealing, like, not a lot of damage, like, you will be a good, a okay damage dealer, it would take you 45 turns to deal as much damage as this deals in a single turn, absolutely crazy um but you'll see these numbers 385 they're not low at all but they're still definitely a lot lower than you get with um the simulacrum with 450 to 360 so yeah um the four round damage is still a good bit higher 691.6 over four rounds versus the uh 537.5 from the previous build um and that's 18 times the baseline. Uh, I would honestly, if I was going to play this, I would still probably prefer this first build because it's already overkilling uh, with its with its first round. You know, it's 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 still killing what you would want to do with a first round. So I almost think this first round damage is not going to do anything more, even though it's almost double what this this build was doing. I don't think it's going to do anything more most of the time. Like, 99 times out of 100. Um, you won't get any more use out of this ability. Uh, doing it the, the way below that you would doing it the simulacrum round. And because the following round damage is higher, I would probably go with this build. And I also added it with uh, Bestow Curse damage, so on average that gets you up to 1,947, almost clocking 2,000 <laughs> damage, um, and just if you happen to roll highest on all the numbers, you get 2,220, just a very nice round number to end up on. So, um, yeah, to kill the highest health monster in the game, you actually only need 9 missiles, and this is without Bestow Curse that I calculated this, 9 missiles to take out the Tarask, and uh, because you can split them, you can kill two of these Tarasks and still have six of your missiles left, which is, you know, 235 damage. And this isn't doubled from the vulnerability that I calculated earlier. This is assuming these are different targets that haven't been made vulnerable. So, absolutely ridiculous. Um, I also added, just for fun, to see what the lowest level I could get to one-shot a Tarask with. Turns out to be not as much low as I thought it was. So, 17 without setup. So this has got the sorcerer levels to uh, uh, boost your... to get the quicken spell off. And if you want to do a round of setup with your held action, like I said before, you can get off 940 damage at level 15. Um, yeah, which will one shot the Tarask. Absolutely ridiculous. This 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 build is totally broken. As I was saying before, like, this is the kind of thing that you really, really, really need to talk to your DM, DM about before you do it, because just don't show up with things this far out of reach. And also, they can easily just counter it if, you know, you know um, like, I, like I said up here, uh, you know, there, there's so many just, like, fringe wording choices that work under readers, readers written, but almost certainly wouldn't under, like, Red is Interpreted, if you want to try and, like, do the bias that Red is Interpreted has just in favor against it, it will be so easy just to shut it down. Yeah. Um, this is mostly just going into, like, interpretations from, like, Jeremy Crawford's t tweets and things like that, and going with this, like, a very strict read, reading the rules. Um... Yeah, this is this is this is a fun gimmicky build, which happens to be extremely strong, but can be counted easily. But yeah, anyway, that's my uh, side project done. Anyway, so <laughs> again, there's 
this is more something you'd probably want to play in like a one shot or something like that because it's it's a little on on the gimmicky well it's very much on the gimmicky side um there are things that can ruin it like your dm just has to throw a, a, a limited immunity creature against you or if you don't have the wizard levels just anything with the shield spell or counter spell um, and you won't be doing anything, and then you also, like, it's it's very no very so, like, you use your spell slots, and then you're kind of out for the short rest. You're still, like, high-level wizard and stuff, so it's, it's pretty, you're still okay, you know, but, um, this isn't, this isn't your, like, normal route. Um, but, yeah, I think a, a big key difference is that using no UA, this is, you know, actually viable to play, in a normal campaign, still wouldn't recommend it. But you know, compared to the build using like Harvest Scythe that was UA, I wouldn't. If someone came to that with it, and I was the DM, I'd say just immediately say no. Like, <laughs> I think uh, you know, exploiting UA if you're ever at that stage, just just a straight up no to using it. Um, unless it was like a one shot, and of course, you know, you can fuck around in a one shot because <laughs> it doesn't matter as much. Um, yeah, if um, anyone ends up playing this, because I haven't played it, um, in, in any kind of high level campaign slash one shot, let me know how it goes, and let me know what you think about what you think about it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. Um, if, especially if you enjoy my content, stick around for more. You know, I've got some other stuff on the channel, um, on a sort of similar vein. Um, yeah. Anyway, thank you, and see ya.